All right, so we're getting a late start today. We had to do a little bit of running around this morning, and uh, my son, he took off and <laughs> went up to get something to eat. What have you been up to? I've been riding on a daydream. We've got a change of plan. Uh, let me go show you here. The uh, water tank, this big water tank, like I said, it's 14 and a half gallons. Um, it's too bulky and we can't seem to find a place for it now if you guys remember from the beginning of this series when this bed used to go across the back of the van uh, and the carpet was not nearly as padded as it currently is with each rib being filled with a, a foam strip and then another foam layer and then carpet over top of that padding it used to be that water tank used to fit underneath the bed and the guy's bathroom was up here. It was over on the, uh, the the front left side. Well, we've got issue with that now because bed is now just on this side. And not only that, but it's it's tighter against the floor than it has been. And since the padding's extra thick, we can't get that big water tank underneath the bed. Nor did we really want to. We'd have to run plumbing underneath. I don't want exposed plumbing underneath of this van. We wanted to keep it inside the van. So to have a water tank over here, plumbing over here, for water to be run over here, wasn't a good idea. We weren't gonna make that work. Now he has a couple of different sink options. The sink that was in this van is a very small corner sink, and it does have a faucet that connects directly to the pressure pump uh, that we're going to wire in here. Or we could do something like this. Now this came out of our Apache pop-up. Uh, this is an old faucet that uh, actually we were going to replace on the Apache but it got lost in the mail and when we got it this was broken off um, and I patched this up since then and this thing works fine so I've just kept it all this time I think we were going to sell it at one point at the yard sale and we just decided to keep it now if you guys aren't familiar with this type of faucet it's really nice it has a flap inside a one-way valve and if you don't have any electric hookup or any water hookup to an outside source it becomes a little water pump let me show you so what this does is if you unscrew this and you have water pressure once you turn this so far the water starts flowing that's if this is pressurized water starts coming out of course this is just cold water only we're not going to have any kind of a hot water system in here and then if you want to um, and you don't have an electric hookup which if you've got 12 volt I mean he's gonna always have electric but um, you can also do this let's say the pump fails um, you just open this up and at that point you just pump and the water will start to flow it'll pull from that same you know from a, a water source of some kind so basically this is set up for a, a holding tank of some kind without an electric pump but we're going to try to run an electric pump with his some progress made here as far as making sure this can slide out everything's good we had to do some trimming here so whenever he's pulling it out with the door closed it would uh, miss that leg of the bed and then also uh, now that the counter has uh, one of its you know corners there whatever you want to call it it uh, had some room I think we might want to try to utilize this um, on the front of this cabinet whenever we start filling it in and figuring it out uh, the other thing that we was doing was with the sink and that one's going to be a tough one because the sink is it's a good perfect little sink but it's going to probably have to be mounted outside once the counter is built and then kind of framed in or boxed in or something so the drain can be close to this door i suppose um, or at least uh, maybe a tank a holding tank I we, we haven't really figured that part out yet um, 
I know a lot of you guys are probably screaming now, hey, just let it run out on the ground. But if he's at Walmart or something and, you know, he wants to wash his hands, I don't want to, I don't necessarily want him to be dumping water all over the parking lot. But uh, it's it's some sort of an option. We, we may have a bucket that it just empties into. I mean, we could put a five-gallon bucket directly underneath this with a hose running into it. I mean, stuff like that. But uh, as far as the water, we're pretty much going to go the simplest way. And that is just basically a hose from this faucet right into this tank and make it to where he just hand pumps it. Uh, if he wants to add a, a powered shower or something on down the road, I mean, we could always do that. Um, it wouldn't be too hard to do. But, yeah, the, the counter came out pretty decent there. Now we've just got to go ahead and do a template for the contour for uh, the front side here and uh, put another support and then we got to put the actual counter top on which uh, we think we're going to keep it simple we'll probably just use a piece of plywood and sand it down we'll have to see but looks like there's a bee coming in here well you better find a spot bee because <laughs> it's going to get cold tomorrow but yeah and we haven't even tackled any kind of a, a build up over top of this thing so we'll, we'll have to see what happens there um, as far as the slider uh, I do have some wheels that we can put on there, or I was thinking about just putting some carpet sliders underneath that you buy, you know, as seen on TV, furniture sliders, they they glide across carpet, so that might work. Well, well again, we're still working on it, but let us get back to putting uh, the template together so we can make uh, this upright here, and then hopefully whenever these two are, are set up correctly, we'll be able to, at that point, make a... Uh, make it to where some shelves might be up top here and uh, then we have to figure out doors and everything else here so lots to do Well, here it is. The game's been called due to rain. Uh, this rain is the front that is bringing in our cold weather. So as I sit here and sweat because it's extremely warm. Oh, and I see he has a problem here. Oh, that's interesting. He's got a leak. Maybe not. Maybe it's just coming over top. Yeah, looks like it's coming over top. Anyways, uh, we got this much done. It's not perfect. Again, I'm not a carpenter, but uh, the side supports have really uh, helped this thing strengthen. When we get the countertop on, that's going to be just that much more, and then we'll do the doors and that. Uh, again, kind of crude, but it's going to get the job done, and uh, we'll put some cabinets up top here. We were talking about putting a shelf across here, and then, of course, that shelf up there, but this is pretty much it. We're... Uh, Boy, that's so wet. I'm going to dry that off for him. We're, we're pretty much done for a while. Now, don't be discouraged because you guys won't see that. You'll see the next installment. It'll come up, uh, you know, whenever we do a little bit more work. So keep your uh, chins up. We'll have something for you. It's a cool, crisp uh, autumn day. Uh, it's not crazy cold, but we're going to get up to the 50s today. Right now, we're into the uh, low 40s, unfortunately. Yeah, it's still a little bit early and this is on the van series the build of the van and sometimes uh, whenever you're doing these kind of projects you may find yourself doing the repair not the the build and it's going to be expected so you guys that go out and buy vans um, you're going to spend just as much time converting the inside and uh, doing all the stuff that you want to as you may with repairs getting it road ready unless you go out and buy a brand new van and then convert it over uh, even then you should know how to repair it now in this case uh, my son's driving the van pretty much every day for work and doing all the stuff that anybody normally would uh, before they hit the road and in this case uh, he went out to start it and it was a cool morning and uh, it just clicks really fast underneath the hood at the uh, starter solenoid now normally when you get a clicking noise underneath, um, I've done a video in the past, if you want to click the uh, link that's up above here, I'll put a link to that video. 
uh, on my other channel and it talks about knowing your vehicles clicks and what to look for um, but if you have a click underneath the hood at the starter relay usually it m is a battery issue so what you need to do at that point is check all your connections and you need to check to make sure your battery's full um, and one way you can do this is turn on your headlights and uh, make sure it's got power uh, again check out that video it'll talk about all that stuff so I'm gonna jump on this and uh, do some checks and then we'll come back and tell you what we had to do all right so something pretty simple with this one and then also complicated let me talk to you about it as you can see we got the uh, battery charger on here and the thing is is the battery charger is not just charging this battery but it's also charging that battery over there because of this uh, relay that I installed uh, which works really well but it's kind of an issue whenever you're trying to troubleshoot you know electrical problems I uh, thought that maybe I would just take and put jumper cables from this battery over here to this one here and then I thought you know I'm gonna use my old Sears uh, battery charger when Sears used to be a real company Sears and Roebuck <laughs> from the back in the day so what happened was uh, we thought that this battery might be a little bit low so as soon as I put the charger on and this battery seen that voltage that it needed for those seconds that it needed uh, it turned on the isolator and it basically became jumper cables to connect the other battery and the van started immediately now the problem that we're gonna have now is trying to diagnose which battery is actually bad because as this starts the van and once the alternator supplies so many volts to this battery uh, this will turn on and then try to start charging this battery now if this battery is bad um, it will be a, a, a voltage hog it'll be trying to take everything that the alternator has to offer and more it'll just say keep on charging me keep on charging me and then in the meantime this battery suffers for it so what we've got to do is have both of these batteries tested individually uh, with them not being connected uh, but being disconnected and brought into uh, in this case Heidi's work and she's gonna have to test both the batteries to find out if they're both good or bad or whatever and then at that point he'll have to replace one both or, or you know whatever so he's either that one this one or both of them and it's all because of this now you're saying why don't you just disconnect that well I can disconnect that and it would be a little bit easier but it's still uh, something that needs to be done because we've never really known the conditions of these batteries when we got the vehicle initially um, and it's it's a good thing to do it, it really is to have this stuff tested and you know it was like the first cold day that all this happened and that's something else that you got to be aware of that batteries really suffer whenever they start to get cold so we're going to go ahead and uh, let him fire this thing up. He's going to take it up to uh, Heidi's work. And then from that point on, they, they take care of everything up there. They'll check the batteries and they'll install the batteries. Uh, that's what they're there for. That's what they do. That's part of their service. So if you want advanced auto parts to work on your stuff, um, you know, I, I think that it's a good thing. And you could get a battery installed. Makes it a lot easier on me, that's for sure. So for the van, what do we do? Well, we got them two new batteries. Now, this is the battery that the vehicle calls for. We also got hold downs. You could tell they're sticking up here. Um, they're, they're actually really good for how cheap they were. <laughs> they're doing a good job. But anyways, uh, going back to what I was saying, this is the battery that it calls for uh, to um, actually run the van, start the van. It only needs 660 cold cranking amps and the old battery that was in there was 800 uh, and we uh, we went ahead and upgraded a little bit uh, we did get him a silver which is only a two-year battery up at her work uh, and they got some kind of a deal going on that you get forty dollars off your next hundred dollar purchase if you buy a battery so he bought this battery and, and it, it's for any battery not just these and the reason that I went with kind of just what is required for this van to start and then on this side we went with a good one is because this one here is the one that's going to be connected to this one after it's been used after he's been running accessories in the back of the van that kind of thing until we get solar on this van or a generator or whatever or both um, you know this is what he's going to use to power a lot of the stuff inside of his van so you can see this one here it's bigger I mean it's 700 cold cranking amps and it has a reserve capacity of 130 minutes which isn't anything crazy 
But the reason I went with an automotive battery instead of a deep cycle battery there is because it is an automotive uh, alternator with older technology and regulators that are actually going to charge that battery. And they don't necessarily know how to charge a deep cycle battery. I mean, the, the deep cycle battery was never meant to be installed in a vehicle. Uh, you know, and if it was, then they had systems that were made to charge accordingly. Now, I know people will say, oh, you can put a deep cycle in and it works just fine. I'm sure it does, but I'm not going to do it and know that it's not designed to do that because it's not the right thing to do. That's just the way I do things. <laughs> so we've got this all set back up. He went ahead and bought two new batteries because his starting battery out of 800 cold cranking amps that he did have in the old one, it only had 60 cold cranking amps available. <laughs> so obviously it wasn't good enough. And uh, this battery uh, that used to be here had 550 cold cranking amps available, but was only using 400 of them. And even though it tested relatively good, it was over eight years old. It was almost nine years old. So we went ahead and decided to replace it. So that's what's going on here. Now I've got one more thing to address and I'll show that to you real quick. As we already talked about, he has a backup camera on here and the adhesive that was provided in the kit uh, didn't handle the summer heat. It, it just couldn't handle it. And even though I clean this so well with some serious cleaning solvent, um, it still fell off in the heat of the summer. So what I'm going to do, and I was trying to avoid it, but it's kind of unavoidable at this point, is go ahead and put a little bit of 3M tape on the adhesive mount. As you can see here, I'm going to put a little bit of 3M tape here to replace what's pulled off. And then I'm going to uh, go ahead and screw this down uh, in the two screw holes that are provided. You can't really see them there, but you can see them this way. These two screw holes uh, to keep it in place on the dash. Uh, you know, he it, it fell off some time ago and he's just kind of left it where it's been. And he turns it on and kind of holds it when he needs it. But anyways, uh, something to be aware of that if you're going to mount this, uh, you may want to just consider screwing it down. And the only reason I say that is because of this situation now in my case on mine i've never had an issue uh, but i've got it set up in a weird way on my dash that the the mount is being secured pretty much or the monitor is being secured by the dash but just fair warning i wanted to guys give an update not uh, you know deceive you or anything that uh, this could happen if you've got a weird mounting situation it was never meant to be mounted this way. It was never meant to be mounted and hanging off of the dash this way. It's meant to be mounted the exact opposite way to where this monitor is directly above right here, this mount. So it's always pushing down on the mount or when it's trying to lean forward, it's pushing down on this part of the mount. Well, that's not the case. It, it didn't work out. So we'll go ahead and fix it the right way. All right, just like before, Mounted up there pretty nice. Like I said, I had to put a couple little tiny screws here. Not a big deal. You know, I didn't want to screw into this dash, but if I had to, I could patch that little hole and nobody would ever know. Um, plus, there's some damage that the previous owner did here with some adhesive. Had nothing to do with us, but uh, it's back up there. Let me make sure it still works out all right. Because uh, he definitely likes using this. <laughs> and he's gotten used to it. Yeah, very fast, and there you go. Nice picture. Very, very good. Really like this. If you guys haven't uh, remembered the review that I did on it and the installation, uh, you know, I'll put the link up above here for that so you guys know. But yeah, he's, he's all set here. Um, the last thing I should do is put a buzzer back in here. I got a Napa one because the buzzer that I installed before just decided not to keep on working so maybe I'll do that in a future video but not today I got stuff I got to do on my truck